we're not exactly sure what contribution the nutrients from the birds make to the reef. We suspect it's pretty high and most studies to date have really just focused on that shallow flow um, and yet we're interested in what's coming out on the side of the reef. My name's Dirk Erler, I'm from Southern Cross University. I'm a research scientist. Uh, I work on groundwater and nutrient cycling. The Leaf to Reef program is all about understanding how changes on the terrestrial side of things affect the marine side of things. And for me, the big link is groundwater because that carries nutrients from the land into the marine environment. Part of my work here is looking at the connectivity between the terrestrial side of things and also the reef. So I'm looking for uh, nutrients that are coming from the birds through groundwater and then that gets discharged into the reef environment and the nutrient that's discharged to the uh, reef environment carries a fingerprint or a signature that comes from the bird poo so we can trace bird poo into the marine system and on this particular trip I'm looking to see how far out from the island that uh, signal of bird poo propagates so we know that it uh, is discharged to the nearshore environment, so that's the stuff growing just off the beach. But further out, we don't really know how far that nutrient travels, so that's the objective of um, the next few days here. So we've got groundwater that sits under the uh, surface at about three metres, and uh, what happens is when the birds all the bird guano gets dropped and then it, with rainfall it percolates down into the groundwater table and um, it's got a lot of nutrient in it. So the first thing we do is we have a, a series of uh, what, what are called pisometers. They're basically groundwater sampling stations around the island and um, every time I come here I take groundwater samples. This thing here just measures moisture. When it hits water, it, uh, it beeps. So then, and this has just got a, some uh, marks on it so we can measure how deep the water is. It's 3.03. This thing here is just a groundwater pump. So we're gonna um, pump out some of this water and then start to collect it. So I'm measuring dissolved oxygen, uh, temperature, conductivity, which is salinity. So salinity is important because we want to know how, how much salt is getting into this aquifer. So the salinity is about 3.5 salinity units and the ocean water is about uh, 35. So it's, it's quite fresh but it's just got that tinge of salt to it. But this is one of the fresher parts of the island because we're so close to the, to the middle. And I do that in the high and the low tide because in the high tide the water table lifts and that pumping action is actually what sucks the groundwater out. So the seawater comes in and mixes with it and it pulls some of that nutrient out. So that's the, the, the main way in which we get groundwater um, running out. It's not from rainfall, it's from that what we call tidal pumping. Freshwater enters the island through uh, recharge, which is basically rainfall, um, but we also have water going upwards as well through uh, what's called evapotranspiration, which is uh, trees basically releasing water to, um, to the atmosphere. Now some of that fresh water that does make it into the ground goes uh, deep within the island and comes out on the edge of the reef and some of it hits this thing called a reef plate which is a, a, a basically a large calcium carbonate structure that goes through the island and it flows over the top of that into the shallow section. So we have a, a shallow flow and a deeper flow and most studies to date have really just focused on that shallow flow um, and yet we're interested in what's coming out on the side of the reef uh, out into the open ocean. The strategy we use is in this particular trip we're going to go out into um, offshore area and we're going to take a series of samples at increasing distance from the island. So I don't know how long that distance will be, maybe 100 metres is enough to capture enough plankton. More than enough. Yeah, so while these guys are diving we'll, we'll do at least one or two of these. Oh yeah, so we've got 12, 12 to do, so at each site we'll collect the, uh, take a, a net sample of zooplankton. Yeah measure the total volume and then I'll take a subsample of that and you can have the rest. Yeah. 
Today we're going to head out um, on the boat and we're actually going to circumnavigate the whole island to collect zooplankton samples from the water as well as do some really shallow water diving along the reef to collect small coral nubbins and some sand so that we can trace those nutrients from offshore into shore around the island. So nitrogen exists in a range of different forms and we try and measure as many of those as possible. So uh, inorganic nutrients, things like um, fertilizers, nitrogen uh, fertilizers, for instance, ammonium and nitrate, we'll measure that in the dissolved in the water. We'll also measure organic nitrogen, which are the larger molecules that are uh, produced by organisms. And also we'll measure particulates, so that's the solid uh, bits in the water column. And that can include anything from zooplankton to phytoplankton, to uh, what we call detritus, which is basically any dead organic matter uh, that's floating around. We tow a net to catch the particulates and then we uh, basically concentrate that into a sample and we also collect uh, large volumes of water which I'll bring back to the lab and filter through very fine um, meshes and um, capture the particulates on that. So we get basically different sizes of particulate. Got a, um, a submersible pump over the side and from that pump we'll then feed water uh, up here, we'll collect them in the barrels, and we're just looking for um, phytoplankton. ultimately trying to understand is how changes in management, what happens if you clear an area, what happens if you vegetate an area, that obviously has impacts on the visitation of birds, which then leads on to um, the amount of nutrient that's put into the ground and then into the groundwater, and how much nutrient then gets out to the reef. So those changes on, on land have huge implications for what's happening in the marine system, but we just don't know what those implications are or how big they are.